Hello and welcome to this IB Maths Intense Session Exponentials and Logarithms number 7 and in this video we will look at how we can use the knowledge we've got of logarithms now that we know what logarithms are and we know all about the laws of logarithms and how to use those to manipulate expressions with logs and finally we get to use logs to solve um, expressions that um, contain exponentials and um, what I mean by that, if you look at this particular uh, screen, uh, we will have had in the past exponential equations of the form 5 to the power of x equals 37. And we haven't had a way of solving this. We know that 5 squared is 25, and we know that 5 cubed is 125. So we know that 5 to the power of 2 is too small, and 5 to the power of 3 is too big. So we could use trial and error, trial and improvement to try and get an answer to this uh, question. But now we have a method using logs where we can get a precise answer very quickly. And the way we do that is that when we get an expression like this, 5 to the x equals 37, we take logs of both sides. Remember, when you've got an equation with an equal sign and equality, if you do the same thing to both sides, then it stays uh, in balance. So... If I just take the log of both sides here, log of 5 to the power of x equals log of 37, they're still equal. Now I can use the laws of logs to manipulate this expression to find a solution for x. Notice I've taken logs here just to base 10. In actual fact, I could take logs to any base I like. I could use the natural logarithm, ln. I could use log to base 74 if I wanted to. This is a lot simpler just to take log to base 10 because it's on the calculator and uh, it's nice and simple. And you don't have to write them down the base either. But uh, laws of logs before, we should know that if we've got log of 5 to the power of x, we can bring the x to the front. x log 5, and this is the, uh, the great trick here with solving for exponentials, x log 5 equals log 37. And then I can just do a little bit of uh, manoeuvring here to get a solution for x. x is log 37 divided by log 5, and I can work that out in my calculator, and indeed I get a solution, not surprisingly, between 2 and 3, it's 2.2436 to 4 decimal places. So 5 to the power of 2.2436 is equal to 37. This is incredibly powerful. I can now solve where the unknown x is the exponent, and I haven't been able to do that before until I found logs. So let's have a look at a few questions of differing types, just so you can see what you might have to answer. But in all of them, it's just about applying the laws of logs, taking logs of both sides. So let's have a look. Nice, uh, straightforward ones to start, a very similar one to the one we just did. Uh, 4 to the power of x is equal to 137. Just take logs of both sides. Log of 4 to the x equals log of 137. And then, like before, bring the x to the front, x log 4 equals log 137. So that means x must be log 137 divided by log of 4. Once you've done a few of these, you can see that actually you could do two moves in one. You could have just written that second statement, x log 4 equals log 137 straight away. But I'm writing it down in full here so we see uh, so see what we're, uh, we're doing. And indeed, this would give we're asked in the question to give our answers correct to three significant figures. Always watch out for that, the level of accuracy required. And here x is equal to 3.55. So 4 to the power of 3.55 is equal to 137. Now in the second question, we've got 5 times 7 to the power of 2x equals 80. Now I could take the log of the whole thing on the left, log of 5 times 7 to the 2x, and then use laws of logs to separate that. But in this case, it's probably easier just to do the dividing by 5 just straight away. So 2 to the x, uh, 7 to the power of 2x is 80 over 5, which is 16. That just makes it a little bit easier, I guess. I can make, um, well, let's write out in full what we know here. Log of 7 to the 2x equals log 16. I can bring the 2x to the front now. 2x log 7 equals log 16. And a bit of division, that means 2x is equal to log 16 over log 7. If I do log 16 divided by log 7 on my calculator, and then divide the answer by 2 to get x, I'll find that x is equal to 0 0.712. 
um, nice and straightforward. Uh, immensely powerful. We haven't been able to do this before without logs. And you might get an expression like the one I've given you at the, the bottom there, C, where we've got x on both sides here. 3 to the 2x equals 5 to the x plus 1. Don't panic. Let's take logs of both sides. Log 3 to the power of 2x equals log 5 to the x plus 1. And then let's bring x to the front as we did before to get 3x log 3. Sorry, 2x. There, sorry, I made a mistake. Apologies. Um, because it's 3 to the power of 2x. 2x log 3 equals x plus 1. I'm sticking that in brackets so it stays all together of log 5. Expand out the bra brackets there. 2x log 3 equals x log 5 plus log 5. Bring all the x's to one side. 2x log 3 minus x log 5 equals log 5. Factorise to get x on its own. x times 2 log 3 minus log 5 equals log 5. And now we can divide to find x. x equals log 5 divided by 2 log 3 minus log 5. And if I work that out in my calculator, be careful with the division on the bottom. Make sure you use brackets so it's all together. But to three significant figures then, I'll get uh, x equals 2.74. So a little bit more complicated when x is on both sides, but um, the secret is always get your uh, parts of the expression with x all on the same side and then factorize. A little bit more tricky here because I've got a bit of everything that we've just seen there. Um, and this is a, a good example just so we can show fully laws of logs. I've got 3 times 8 to the power of 2x minus 1 equals 4 times 5 to the power of 2x plus 1. I could divide by 3, I suppose, to start with just to get rid of the 3 from the front. But um, let's use the laws of logs and, and just take the logs of everything. So I've got log of 3 times 8 to the 2x minus 1. Just to show you that we can equally just take log of everything. Log of 4 times 5 to the power of 2x plus 1. Now remembering our laws of logs, we can split these, can't we? And we can make that log 3 plus, and I'm going to bring the 2x minus 1 down here, uh, log 8 equals log 4 plus, and then I'll bring the 2x plus 1 down here as well, log 5. Now, this is just uh, yeah, a long process now, having to expand everything out. Log 3 plus 2x log 8 minus log 8 equals log 4 plus 2x log 5 plus log 5. Now, again, like the previous example, let's move everything that's got x onto one side. So I end up with 2x log 8 plus 2x log 5 on this side. And on the other side, I've got log 4 plus log 5 minus log 3 plus log 8. OK, and then factorise. Let's get x on its own. 2 log 8 plus 2 log 5. It's just a bit cumbersome, isn't it? I'm going to write all of this down. I apologise if it's boring for you to watch. But uh, you'll have to do this yourself in the exam or when you're doing examples. So if I've got to suffer, you might as well suffer as well at the same time. So then x equals everything here on the, the right-hand side. Log 4 plus log 5 minus log 3 plus log 8. All divided by 2x log eight, uh, sorry, 2 log 8 plus 2 log 5. There's a lot there, isn't there? But um, be uh, careful with your calculator. Put everything on the top in brackets. Put everything on the bottom in brackets so it stays together. And you'll get a solution there um, that x is equal to 4.23, correct, to three significant figures. Fantastic. Work that through yourself. 
and hopefully you get the same answer as me. Now, often exponential uh, problems are given in the form of a wordy kind of question. Now, I've made these examples up, so uh, scientists, uh, biologists, don't write to me to say this is a ridiculous example. I've just made up the numbers. But here's an example. The number of mosquitoes in a population is given by n equals 1,000 times 1.05 to the power of 4t, where t is the number of days elapsed since I start measuring the number of mosquitoes. After how many days will the population exceed 2,000? So I want n to be greater than 2,000. In other words, I want 1,000 times 1 1.05 to the power of 4t to be greater than 2,000. So um, this is very much like the previous example, now that I've put it into that form. So I want 1.05 to the power of 40 to be greater than 2, because I'm dividing both sides by 1,000. 40 log 1.05 has got to be greater than uh, log 2. 40 greater than log 2 over log 1.05. And so um, we'll... Work that out on a calculator, log 2 divided by log 1.05 and then divide our answer by 4. We end up with t has got to be greater than 14.2. So after how many days will the population exceed 2,000? Well, t has got to be greater than 14.2. So strictly speaking, it needs to be after 15 days because we're measuring in whole days. OK, after 15 days. Good. One more example and then... You need to just practice, I think. So, uh, again, there's no science in this. It's, I've just made the numbers up. But the weight of a block of ice. Can you measure the weight of a block of ice? Yeah. After t seconds is given by w, weight, equals ke to the minus 0.02t. Now, a couple of things here is we're not given a starting weight. Um, and we're using e, the base e, um, in this question. So... We want to know how long it'll take to reach half its original weight. So a couple of things to note here. When you're not given um, a weight and you're asked how long it takes to reach a half its weight or a quarter of its weight, then you just need to give yourself, you can give it any weight. You could say, well, let's imagine the starting weight was 100. So I want my new weight to be half of it, 50 equals, and the original weight was 100 times e to the minus 0.02t. I could have used anything there. I could have used 0.5 equals 1 times e to the minus 0.02t. I could have used 500 and 1,000. It doesn't matter so long as the relationship is, as spoken there, a half. And um, now I'm going to um, take, uh, well, I've, I'm going to divide by uh, 100 first, just so that I've got um, this uh, the e to the power of on its own. But I could have taken logs of the whole, whole of the right-hand side, I guess. Now here, because I'm working in base E, I'm going to take logs to the natural base. So I'm going to take ln of 0 0.5 equals minus 0.02t ln of E. Um, it just seems to make sense if we've got the base of E to work in base E, in other words, a natural log. Now hopefully you can see that ln of E is equal to 1 because e to the power of 1 is e. So I, uh, I don't need to do any um, anything with that now. I can just say that minus 0.02t equals ln of 0.5. So t equals ln of 0.5 all over minus 0.02. And if I work that out on my calculator, I'll find that t is equal to 34. 6, 6. So in other words, it'll take 34.66 seconds for this block of ice to halve its original weight. Maybe the, maybe the weather's very sunny or it's a hot room. I don't know. I just made up the numbers. But there you go. There's a number of styles of questions where we're going to use logs or the natural log to solve a problem where the unknown is part of the exponent. And often the problem will be a wordy one where you've got to... Um, to, to decide how to express the problem numerically. I hope you found that useful. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, IB Maths Intense. Tell your friends I'm here and drop me an email at ibmathsintense at gmail.com if you've got any questions, any requests, anything you'd like to see, or if you spotted any mistakes 
in the work that I've been doing. It would be great to hear from you anyway. But in the meantime, enjoy your maths and you take care.